Hello everybody, welcome on my channel. And this afternoon we'll be talking about Clearfield, uh, uh, Nasdaq company and the ticker is CLFD. I'll be showing you a few uh, details for the company and then after we'll be building the operating model based on their projection for 2023. Based on this, I estimate around a 40% uh, share price increase since today, where the share price is around $80. So what is Clearfield doing? Basically, they are doing fiber management. So installation of all these fiber cables and things like this from the center to the uh, to the consumer. So it can be the home, business service, wireless, or uh, different bigger buildings like MDU, MTU. So they have various uh, type of products. Uh, the advantage of them is that they can be installed quite quickly and actually requiring less manpower than other companies. So that's kind of their mode that they have uh, at the moment. And that's the reason why they are gaining a lot of market share recently uh, over competitors. That's an example here from a feeder to the consumer, for, for example, a little home, uh, where this basically there are these um, products from Clearfield can be installed uh, all along this uh, requirement, this line of delivery from the feeder to the substation distribution and up to the drop. This is also an extract from their presentation where they show the main highlights. Uh, one a big advantage of this uh, of this field is that they will benefit uh, from U.S. subsidies, uh, which will be around 100 million 100 billion dollars uh, for tier two and tier three market, which is the uh, field where they are really uh, acting at the moment. And for example, uh, this is a split revenue split for this quarter, and you can see that 61 percent of the uh, revenue is coming from the tier two and tier three utilities, municipalities, and alternative carriers. Okay. Here is the DNA card, so mostly uh, summarizing all the metrics for the company. At the moment, the market cap is $1 billion. Uh, they don't have much uh, cash, but they don't have much debt either. They don't dilute uh, any shares uh, over the last three years. They haven't. They just recently uh, made a $100 million raise, uh, but that's to fuel the growth. They have a good yield, uh, free cash flow to EV for, this, for the last quarter was around 7% the yield, so it's very good. And also what you can see here uh, on the detail, I don't know if I can zoom in here, is the gross profit uh, over the um, OPEX over the last three years. And you can see that when, uh, whenever the gross profit increased, this, for example, SGNA and then uh, R&D do not increase as much. And this is what we qualify as a great operating leverage. That's why I'm interesting into this company is because they, they generate a great level up. So if the revenue growth is estimated, for example, at 40%, maybe the net income will increase even more. Um, in terms of retain, uh, retained earnings over the last, uh, since, since inception of the company, they have retained at least $95 million. So it means that they are really on the profitable part uh, of their story, which, is, uh, which I'm really interested in. You can see just a slight deterioration on the gross margin for the last four quarters from 45 to 39. I think it's because of the acquisition of, uh, of uh, inorganic growth, of Nestor, sorry, Nestor company that may be adding a little bit of uh, pressure on the gross margin, but I think it should stabilize around the 40%. Their last quarter actually was really uh, impressive compared to the, other, to the other three. And um, I think this is really what you can uh, uh, take from uh, from these uh, metrics. Now let's go for the guidance. Uh, they are very transparent in terms of guidance. So Cherry, the CEO, mentioned uh, around 380 to 393 million dollars forecast for 2023 compared to 271. So it's around 40 to 45 percent growth, which is actually very impressive. Uh, from the experience also, Cherry's CEO is also like a person that is usually not sandbagging, but very conservative. So if she's guiding for this value, um, she will not, uh, she will probably not miss uh, these values. Another extract from their uh, conference call is about the OPEX. This is very interesting for us when we want to build a model or at least a prediction. And uh, Cherry, the CEO, confirmed that around 15% of the revenue will be used for OPEX, so not more. So based on this, we can do our estimation. I consider that we are in the high range of this forecast, 390. Gross margin, I consider 42% compared to the uh, 45 to 39% gross margin that we have in 2022. 
OPEX, I follow the guidance from, uh, from the CEO, which is 15% of the revenue. Tax rate, I don't change, it's 20%. It gives us a net income at the end of $76 million. If you divide by 14 million shares, it will give you an APS of $5.5. Based on this, you can apply a PE ratio. Considering that it's a company that is growing very fast, uh, 45%, you could easily put a PE of between 15 and 20, which will represent a price between 93 and $123. Now, if you put that on a graph, which I did here, this is the target values that I just mentioned, 93 and 123, I put it on the, um, on the graph for 2024. And basically from the point of today, uh, which is $80, I just put some lines uh, for their target and basically you can estimate the compound annual growth rate that you will have if you invest today in this, into this company. So my estimation, I say $110, $115, which would match the, by basically the, the target window that I'm showing here, which will represent around 40% compound annual growth rate, which is very, very good. So uh, I won't spend too much more time, but just summarize the pros on this company. So massive headwinds for the coming years for the government with stimulus of around $100 billion. The effect might come in place uh, for the revenue for Clearfield around 2024. So don't expect too much for 2023. Great execution team, uh, including the CEO who has been there since inception and, and has, been, has seen this company from very little uh, uh, market cap to uh, now to this one billion dollar market cap. They also mentioned uh, proved that over the last few years they could uh, implement a great operating leverage. This is what we really like between the revenue and the net income. Also, the product has been showing very uh, easier to install, and that's why they gain market share. Also, at the moment, the um, I'd say. The, man, the manpower is difficult to get, so it's, it's even better in this, especially in this configuration, this situation today. Uh, the good value uh, for $80 price, tar uh, price uh, the, today is, uh, is quite a good value, so that, that's why I'm interested in too. They are also reinforcing their own supply chain to avoid depending on, uh, by, on problems from uh, other, uh, other suppliers. That's what the reason why they, ac uh, they acquired Nestor recently. And also they expanded their facility in Mexico to, uh, to fuel more growth. Um, the new potential market also, tier one US market can be a, a, another leg for growth. Uh, don't forget about the international markets too. And obviously the 5G opportunities. So delivery to the uh, antennas, uh, 5G antennas. The only cons that I see is basically uh, because they grow very, very fast, they have to be able to also supply uh, quickly. And that's the reason why they might uh, raise uh, a little bit of money, especially these this, uh, this coming years. I don't think it will dilute too much the, uh, the investors, but I think this is something we need to be aware of and, then, uh, and monitor. So I think that's it for Clearfield. I don't want to make it too long, but uh, if you like this video, just make a thumbs up and, uh, and follow up, uh, uh, follow this channel if you want to get more uh, updates on the various stickers that I'm mentioning. Okay, have a good day and then see you soon. Ciao, ciao.